everyone. My name is Maren Longhurst. I work for Sam Rodell Architects in Spokane, Washington. Um, so I'm sure all of you around the world know uh, where the Pacific Northwest is. I know Seattle and Portland, but do you know uh, the inland Northwest? Uh, Spokane is the epicenter of this eastern subregion of the Pacific Northwest on the other side of the mountains and different in almost every way. Right, Zach? Yes, um, I can attest to this. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, our motto over here is near nature and near perfect, but we do try to keep that a secret. Um, the only thing we're missing over here is the ocean, but we make up for that by the vast quantity of lakes. So when you ask someone about their weekend plans, they will almost always say, oh, we're going to the lake, and you know just to not ask which lake. It's just the idea of it. Um, so like Prudence said, we've designed passive house projects throughout the Pacific Northwest from Washington, Idaho, Montana, um, and beyond. Um, we have several certified projects and um, an institutional project that won the FIAS design competition a few years ago. And this is our office in the historic steam plant building, downtown Spokane. So the project I'd like to talk today was built on this hillside with this amazing view. And now I will give the screen back to Zach so he can share the video. I'm Diane Rutherford. And I'm Rob Rutherford. I wanted to have an energy efficient house. In fact, I, the first time I met with Sam, I said, I told him I wanted to build a house an earth home in like in a cave in the side of a hill and that was not practical so but we did um, want to have an energy efficient house so Sam made all that happen well he had a little sample in his office up on a shelf one day I kind of pointed at it and said what's that and he started talking about rammed earth and then that fit really well with the energy efficiency of this passive house it fits in with nature it's not you know even the landscaping and everything isn't something that you wouldn't see in nature. We didn't want to have one of these garish McMansions that stand out. We wanted it to kind of blend in. And I think with the rammed earth helps that happen. And the, the outside is darker and kind of blends in better. And we, we really appreciate that Sam thought of all of those things. I think it looks like the Grand Canyon colors and I just love it because it's part of nature. So I love this quote and I do try to keep it in mind when, when we're approaching a new project. We owe it to the fields that our houses will not be the inferiors of the virgin land they have replaced. We owe it to the worms and the trees that the buildings we cover them with will stand as promises of the highest and most intelligent kinds of happiness. And that's from Alain de Botton, The Architecture of Happiness. So when you're given a site like this with the spectacular view and the client asks for a cave, what do you do? We looked to the theory of prospect and refuge, which tries to describe why certain environments feel secure and meet basic human psychological needs by providing people with the capacity to observe or prospect without being seen or refuge. The result was a cave, conceptually speaking, uh, or a home with massive privacy walls on the north aspect facing the public road and mostly transparent walls to the south on the lake side of the house. The combination of design, materiality, and passive house principles uh, created a space that offers not just visual and psychological security, but also physical comfort and the knowledge that this building will stand for generations. The building skin has three main components, thyre wall or structural insulated rammed earth wall, a Parklex panelized rain screen and Unilex glazing. So the materiality here combines a very natural biophilic palette with superior technological performance. 
Um, this slide shows a, the Parklex panel, which is composed of a real natural wood veneer bonded to a substrate with resin for a zero maintenance, fireproof, weatherproof rain screen. They call it at uh, Parklex, they call it technical wood. The high performance of the Unilex triple glazed windows allowed us to really take advantage of the views with floor to ceiling glass and super insulated transitions that appear almost seamless from the interior to the exterior. And the third component of the skin, sire wall, is a technologically advanced refinement of an ancient building practice. It represents the transformation of a historically proven but unsophisticated and limited building material into an effective contemporary architectural medium. I'm going to talk a little bit about Sirewall just because I think it's something that really sets this project apart. Um, we partnered with the company located on Salt Spring Island in British Columbia that developed Sirewall. Sire stands for Structural Insulated Rammed Earth. And this is an insulated engineered sandstone wall with the strength of reinforced concrete and a high R value combined with thermal mass. And just a disclaimer, we are a partner from the Sirewall, but we aren't paid for the shout out. We just really love the product. And we lo love that we had the opportunity to use it here. Um, in contrast to many contemporary building materials, as well as really most consumer products today, Sirewall is not generic prefabricated or faux anything. Firewall is regional, handcrafted and structurally expressive. Um, Sirewall is a, an engineered product. It's made of locally sourced materials. It's highly durable, weather resistant, mold and pest proof. And it's also beautifully handcrafted. So you can see this whole list of uh, benefits that are rare in any other combination, any other assembly um, that Sirewall offers. Um, durability, a timeless beauty, acoustic properties, um, maintenance free, and a whole host of, of benefits. Probably the top benefit in our consideration was the durability of the product. Sirewall is built to last. The raw material is just soil, but the finished product is like stone. Uh, so a 3,500 PSI water jet that could cut through a two by four would barely abrade the sirewall surface. The engineering specs are similar to a concrete wall with steel reinforcement embedded in the rammed earth layers. Beautiful. So before construction begins, the Sirewall project man manager will visit local gravel pits to collect samples of potential material. And the material is taken from just above the bedrock level where uh, they can um, economically harvest consistent quality of material, which is totally free of organic matter. And because Sirewall uses material that is too fine for road construction, which is one of the typically used for the um, for the source material, the walls are actually built with a waste material. Uh, so that means that the cost and the carbon footprint embedded in this choice of material ex is extremely low in comparison to most other building materials. The material for our project, I believe it came from within a 15 minute drive from the project site. Uh, soil samples collected from the potential sources are evaluated using computer analysis to predict the optimum soil mix and then sample material cylinders are rammed and sent to independent labs for testing so that we have hard engineering data specific to the project for the structural engineers to work with. This is a typical sire wall assembly. So it sits on a reinforced concrete footing with a layer of insulation sandwiched between two layers of rammed earth reinforced with steel and then capped with a top plate to hold the roof structure. Another great benefit of Sirewall is that it is inorganic. Um, organic materials are not only susceptible to mold and rot, pests and fire, they actually exist within a life cycle that inevitably ends with either decay, burning, or becoming food for another organism. 
When we build with organic materials, the process that we use to delay the course of nature usually involves adding toxic chemicals or carcinogens. Building with an inorganic material creates an architecture that is durable, non-toxic, healthy, and comfortable. So again, organic materials decay. They return to the earth from whence they came. And you all know the story, the old folk tale, the first little piggy and the second little piggy chose organic material, prioritizing the initial cost. And pig number three built with an inorganic material, prioritizing durability over cost. And we know how that story ended. So typically when you think of a rammed earth wall, you might think of a hot desert climate, uh, Southern Arizona or something, um, where you can really reap the benefit of the wall absorbing heat during the day and then releasing that heat back at night. Um, but Syro wall with its layer of insulation embedded in the rammed earth really becomes suitable for just about any climate. This is an interesting study done by um, the British Columbia Institute of Technology. So the top graph shows the outside conditions over the course of a week with relative humidity in blue and outside temperature in red. You can see a pretty wide fluctuation from 38 degrees Fahrenheit up to 54 degrees temperature. And um, also pretty big fluctuations in relative humidity. The bottom graph shows the same one week period with sensors inside an uh, unoccupied, unheated sirewall home over the same time period. Uh, the extremes are almost completely flattened. And you can see not only the benefit of thermal lag, but also the effect of hygric buffering. So the rammed earth material actually absorbs excess moisture from the air and then releases it over time as the relative humidity, humidity fluctuates. And, um, so in our project with eight inches of rigid foam in the wall, the total R value is just about R33. And um, this study actually showed that an R33 wall assembly, this might seem low, especially for our climate zone, climate zone six um, in a passive house scenario, but because of the benefit of the thermal mass, this wall actually outperforms a wood frame wall with a rated value as high as R50. Another aspect of sirewall is just the sheer beauty of the material. The handcrafted nature gives huge design flexibility from subtle color variations to high contrast, quiet, simple layering to dramatic swirls of color. And the craft is really evident in the finished product, even to the point of the permanent lunch lines, which are named from the layer when the crew leaves the project for lunch, allowing the last layer to dry just a bit more before the next layer is applied. And you can see in the, the photo on the right, oh, about every maybe four feet, there's an extra definition in the line between layers. Um, both the interior and exterior finished surfaces are integral to the material. So not only is maintenance reduced to almost nothing, there's no need for drywall, paint, siding, or any really any treatment at all, both interior and exterior. In our project, um, we started by designing the aesthetics of the wall, testing color samples, designing the texture and the rhythm of the layers. The Sirewall team built a test wall on site for the client to approve the color choices and that test wall became an address marker and a landscape feature. Watching the build process was fascinating. Um, you can see that the formwork for Sirewall is much more robust than typical concrete forms. Um, this is to handle the, the high compaction of the material and as, as well as the precision of the finished wall dimension. The material is mixed on site with cement, dye and other additives and then filled with layers of about four inches at a time. And then that is tamped by hand. So the installers are using hand tampers to compress each lift achieving a very high compressive strength. And at the end of each day, a new test cylinder is actually created just so that we can actually verify the 
product performance, the structural performance of that wall at the site with the material mix that we're using. Pulling off the forms is always exciting. It reveals the beauty of the stone and you can definitely see the handiwork of the craftsman. So once the sire wall portions were in place, our construction team, Edward Smith Construction, came in and built the rest of the house to fit within the rammed earth walls. And um, this, is, this shows the foundation walls, fully insulated footings. And then our, our drawings showing the wall section. And um, because of the thickness of the sire wall resting on this extra thick footing to carry um, the full thickness of the wall, um, we couldn't get a continuous insulation layer from below the slab to the core of the wall. So we wrapped the entire footing, setting the footing on structural foam. The wall section shows um, the vapor barrier in orange wrapped from below the, the slab up into the sire wall core attached to the insulation. The insulation serves as the air barrier within the wall and then at the top of the wall the sheathing is sealed to a top plate which is set in Prosico air and water seal that provides a bearing surface for the roof assembly. And you can see from the isometric cutaway really that um, the road facing walls are massive and um, provide a great deal, deal of privacy and the, the walls facing the lake are relatively transparent. So here's the framed wall, I'm showing the air ceiling, the great attention to detail. Um, we, they installed the sheathing right over the window opening so that we could test air tightness throughout the construction process. And we did several blower door tests um, during construction, just to make sure that the envelope quality stayed on target. The final blower door test result was 0 0.04 CFM per square foot of envelope or equivalent to 1.3 ACH50. And you can see that um, this building envelope is very efficient. You can see how happy that snow is just hanging out on the roof, um, sometimes actually longer on the roof than on the ground, um, showing that sirewall really is appropriate to just about any climate zone. This project is in climate zone six with four definite seasons, almost 7,000 heating degree days and only 370 cooling degree days. The average hottest day temperature is 86 degrees Fahrenheit and coldest day is 24 degrees. And talking to the clients, they actually have more issues with overheating on sunny winter days than anything. They're rarely, rarely cold um, because of that low sun coming in under the overhangs on the glazed, the south side of the building. And again, the snow sits happily outside the windows right up against the glazing while the inside temps are nice and cozy. Um, this year we had snow before Halloween and overnight lows down into the teens a few weeks ago. And uh, the homeowners just finally turned on their heat for the first time this year, just last weekend. I talked to Rob this morning and asked him if the house was comfortable and he said, well, I'm standing here touching the window right now and it doesn't feel any different from the wall. And we actually have an inch of snow on the ground today. The project is certified to the FIAS Plus 2015 standard with a heating load of 4.6. And here's a closer look at the targets. The project is also LEED Gold certified and using the AIA 2030 calculator, the project has a modeled energy use intensity of just 6.31 kBTU per square foot per year. So this, this project beats the national baseline by about 84%. And thanks to this project and um, the other passive house projects in our office, um, 
This, our portfolio qualified our firm as one of 16 to meet the AIA 2030 commitment last year. I think some of you that are on this call are probably on this list as well. I recognize a few of the names. And of course, the most important thing about this hillside cave is that the clients love it. They are very happy here. And as with any project, the team is really the critical piece to success. Um, we were happy to work with Edward Smith Construction, Certified Passive House Builders, uh, Wendy Smith of 509 Design for our interiors, um, Peter Anderson of Anderson Consulting was our rater, and of course we have fantastic clients. Thank you, and that's all we've got.